Previously on Drake Paragon. If the eye at the head of the sail is small enough. Those guys are way out there now. We're about to get some pretty big wake. Going straight down, right? Yeah. You bring your centerboard up. Everything is tightened down and out. I'm sure we'll see ice. Go for a sail with the president pretty much whenever you want. It's great when more people who know nothing about sailing can get into sailing. Even without wind, man, I'll take this. There she is. The Cass and Young destroyer. Friday, Boston Harbor, we are about to go ashore. We're gonna take the ferry, which picks up right over there, over to Charlestown, which is right over there, from where we will walk to the USS Constitution ship, have a tour aboard. They also have a museum there about the USS Constitution, as well as a World War II US Navy destroyer that available for touring around and it's very cool for them to see. Looks like a beautiful warm day. We won't need jackets, just t-shirts. There's a lot of activity today in the harbour. Oh yeah. We have helicopters and sailing yachts and barges. Wow. That definitely looks military. On the day of 9-11, I was aboard my boat at Constitution Marina asleep in the bee berth and my friend called me on the cell phone and told me what had happened. I stuck my head out, looked around, and I saw fighter jets fly right overhead and wow. helicopters everywhere. The harbor was on lockdown. They had U.S. Navy gunships all over the harbor. No planes allowed in the sky, no boats allowed in the water. It's guns everywhere. Navy, police, Coast Guard, just everywhere you look there was a soldier. The Navy Yard had SWAT guys with like full sort of like commando body armor gear and machine guns. What are these guys? Let's go! Oh, let's go! Let's roll. It's just staying stationary. He's looking for the Irish guy that's making money. He's out! Don't even joke about them. <laughs> <laughs> like for the first night I was here, that's what I was dreaming about. Aww. I dreamed about like every boat coming up alongside the ship going, so this is where you are. We thought you were in water boat. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Let's rock and roll. I'll bring the, the rubbish. Hi. Wow, the ropes are so dry. <laughs> I'll row in. You got room to sit up there. I got plenty of space. Okay. So. so we're gonna get the ferry. Yeah. From it's not a aquarium, but it's. Uh, it's right on the in, other side of that open bar. Right yeah. in front of the aquarium. But this ferry here, it's still part of the T, which is the name of the uh, the underground railway system yep. here in, in Boston. Yep, and the bus. The MBTA, Mass Bay Transportation Authority, otherwise known as the T. Mm -hmm. So if you were cruising here in Boston, that would probably be the best place to go to get transported. Yeah. Where? What do you mean to get the ferry? On the MBTA. On the MBTA, yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. The public transportation system through Boston is extensive and it's very easy to use. You can get anywhere you want to go in metropolitan Boston by taking the train. It's fun! <laughs> Join the fun! MBT. What is it? MBT? A. It is A. Yeah. Who knows? Has, has taken to calling it the T now. <laughs> Well, I'm a real Bostonian. Yes, yes, I blend in so well. <laughs> wow. 
People love hanging out on the end of Long Wharf here, just looking at Boston Harbor. They come all the way out to the end of the wharf to look at the harbor. Oh, what we're doing it would be delightful. We're kind of looking at the harbor all the time. Yeah, that's a ferry that will take to the Constitution. Oh, look at you go with your bad self rowing backwards. Crazy mad skills. Hmm. <laughs> Is it really that stuff? No, I'm just a very good actor. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you slide the ore out of it? You were rowing so hard that you bent the ore log. Now it's stuck. Uh -huh. Don't hit me with that. Man. All right. Out you go. Yeah. One at a time. One like, at a time. I don't want the bow to go down like both. It won't. I can take my fat ass out of the thingy. Oh, well, I should grab it. I'll grab it. Don't worry. I got this one. Yeah. Here, so it doesn't okay. sit in the hot sun. Wow. Oh, oh, that's hot, eh? It's pretty hot. All right. Let's go check out the Constitution. buy them on the boat. People who live in Charleston, get out of work in Boston, come down here for a cocktail, and just hurry back home. Wow, look at how this guy comes in for a landing. It reminds me of how we rode the dinghy in for a broadside landing like that. financial district behind there. Legal Seafoods restaurant is in the bottom of this building and then it's an office building. And over here we have the Marriott Hotel, the architecture of which resembles a ship. It's pretty cool. And we are headed out into Boston Harbor. We'll be passing right by Paragon on the way. This is Fort Independence, another one of the Boston Harbor ferry boats. I think they're going out to George's Island for the day. But the boat that we're on right now, this is more of a commuter ferry. I think most of the people here are going to work or going back home from work. And there's Paragon! Wow! That's my boat. Now that, my friends, is an offshore sailing vessel. Suitable for sailing in any waters of the world. 
as you and I will soon find out. has enormous uh, naval history. It was a major port for U.S. Navy warships in World War II, but also back to the Civil War and World War I. War. It's always been a major military seaport. I remember going for cab rides and talking to the cab drivers who were much older th than me, who were from Boston, and they would tell me about those days when there were just thousands of U.S. Navy sailors all over this area. It's changed so much since then. The Charlestown Navy Yard was established in 1801 and was one of the oldest shipbuilding facilities in the United States Navy. In its 174 year history, more than 200 warships were built in the Charlestown Navy Yard and thousands were repaired there. When the Charlestown Navy Yard closed in 1974, the 30-acre property was transferred to the National Park Service. Today, the Navy Yard supports the preservation of the USS Constitution and the USS Cassin Young Destroyer as representatives of the kinds of vessels that were built in the yard. Shipwright by trade, I came to Boston from Falmouth to work on the 74-gun ship the Navy's building here. Federalists in Boston don't much like the war. As for me, I don't much like politics. All I know is that with the money I earn by my labor, I'll head back home to wed my sweetheart Mary. <laughs> More work, the better, I say. I think he's in uh, completely wrong business. The man obviously has a talking dog. He should promote that. What's he doing working on a gunboat? <laughs> Get with it. So that guy worked on the Constitution. Just right it's over there. It's amazing how they had color photo back then. <laughs> I think the next tour begins in six minutes. Oh, sweet. So that's the dry dock. Wow, yeah, that's the dry dock. Jeez. Very good with you. Yeah, right. <laughs> you could fit a million paragons in there. A dry dock is a narrow basin that is flooded with water to allow a ship to enter. The water is then pumped out to allow that vessel to come to rest on a dry platform. Dry docks are used for the construction, maintenance, and repair of ships. The Charlestown dry dock was inaugurated in 1833 with the docking of the USS Constitution. Since then, many ships have docked here, including the RMS Aquitania, the destroyers USS Hamilton and USS Cassin Young, the guided missile cruiser USS Little Rock, and the captured German destroyer Z-39. In all of my years of living here, I don't think I ever saw it empty. I always saw it full of water. It's enormous, huh? Cool. 
I think they just had the Cassin Young Destroyer in right out here. There she is. Cassin Young Destroyer. I think she's beautiful. Let's go check her out. Old man in that shack. Yeah. That restores, you know, the brass and everything when things break. Yeah. Yeah. He talks to the Taurus. Oh, cool. Really? Yeah. Wow. Thank, Thank you so you. much. During World War II, the United States Navy commissioned 175 Fletcher-class destroyers to be built. These destroyers were used to escort and defend ship convoys, to rescue pilots and sailors at sea, and to bombard land, air, and underwater targets. Fletcher's had a design speed of 38 knots and an armament of five five-inch guns 10 21 inch torpedoes, 28 depth charges, and an arrangement of anti aircraft guns. Fletcher destroyers could refuel at sea and thus could cover the vast distances required by the U.S. Navy fleet in the Pacific during World War II. The USS Cassin Young destroyer was built in San Pedro, California, and commissioned on December 31, 1943. She is 376 feet long, 40 feet wide, and carried 273 crew members during wartime. The USS Cassin Young was named after U.S. Navy Captain Cassin Young, who received the Medal of Honor for bravery during the attack on Pearl Harbor, and who later died in the naval battle of Guadalcanal on November 13, 1942. The USS Cassin Young served with distinction in the Pacific during the war, where she rescued 120 survivors of the stricken carrier USS Princeton. She also participated in the Okinawa campaign, where she was hit by two kamikaze planes. These attacks killed 22 sailors, wounded 45, and disabled the ship's propulsion. The remaining crew were able to contain the damage, restore power in one engine, and got the ship underway to safety within 20 minutes. The USS Cassin Young was decommissioned in 1960 and then opened to the public in 1981 as a part of Boston National Historical Park. That was quite a story that he told us about the Caston Young.
What the hell was that music from? Well, our viewers can guess. Wait. They can email us up drakeparagon at gmail.com. <laughs> if you know that song. <laughs> Am I getting in the strand of that? Uh, uh, 